Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. So I want to have a conversation about survivor's guilt. But I first want to say that if you have lost someone to cancer recently, I am so sorry. And if you have been mourning the loss of someone for a long time, I feel your pain. I have lost family members and dear friends and colleagues to cancer. It's a hazard of having a charity that works in the healthcare space that I do see people pass away. And I am very sorry if you're going through that. I do want to really deal with this topic, but I also want to inject a little bit of comic perspective into survivor's guilt because I do run a charity called the Comedy Cures Foundation. And when I came across this joke, I actually really laughed. So if you're not ready to listen to one joke about survivor's guilt, I want you just to fast forward maybe 10 seconds so that I can do the joke because I do want to get into real facets of survivor guilt. I just want to show you a comic perspective on it. So this cartoon was created by a cartoonist named Baloo and it's two men talking and one man says to the other man, technically, shouldn't everybody have survivor's guilt? (laughs) (laughs) Well, there it is. Yes, technically we should all have survivor's guilt. So if you're experiencing it, it's a real thing. And I felt that this was a good way to put some air and some light into the space as we dig into it. And I looked online for some interesting resources about this, not just my own experience, but the way other organizations and people are dealing with survivor's guilt. And ASCO's cancer.net had a really beautiful, quick explanation about these feelings that we might be experiencing of guilt or blame or regrets And it's usual that you could experience this and it could be hard to accept or express this loss. And a lot of us really say, what if, if only, and we have a lot of different scenarios running through our head, according to the editorial board at cancer.net. Now, what I thought was interesting I made a list of things that I thought could cause survivor's guilt that I've actually looked at. And it pretty much matched ASCO's cancer.net. So I'm just going to read some of them and definitely want to give a shout out because our lists were very similar. So survivor's guilt could also come from you missing work and costing your company money. You could have survivor's guilt because you blame yourself for getting cancer. And that could be because of a lifestyle. It could also be because of a religious perspective that you have. You could ask yourself, did I do something to cause cancer? So survivor's guilt can actually be feelings that you have about losing someone, but it can also be about your own guilt about your own cancer. Now, 
you could be experiencing guilt because you're causing a financial drain on your partner or your family. You could feel that you're being a burden to your family. You could feel guilty because you didn't notice your symptoms sooner, or maybe a treatment didn't work. You're feeling guilty because you didn't respond to treatment that people respond to a lot. And I have to tell you that I had that. I had three surgeries, 44 radiation treatments, and two and a half years of chemotherapy. And I didn't respond (laughs) to that. So that was a lot of expense and a lot of time. And at the end, it didn't work for me. I had a very aggressive rare cancer that didn't respond. And I could have been a burden to my family or to people who were trying to care for me. They could be burning out because I wasn't responding. They weren't seeing results that they had hoped. And maybe I was causing survivor guilt to them. So this guilt thing is really toxic and it's really powerful. So I just want to talk about it from a 360 point of view, because it's not only that we may be losing someone, but that we could have guilt if we're on treatment and we're not being the best we can be in terms of our behavior or we're not responding. So I just thought this was super, super interesting to talk about it. I haven't really heard a lot about it in terms of support groups that I've been privy to. So I just really wanted to dig into it a bit. One thing about having this survivor's guilt be unbridled is that it can actually cause depression. And if you are experiencing signs of depression, please make sure that you talk to a medical professional, either a social worker at your hospital or through your doctor's office or a psychologist or psychiatrist. Even support groups can really be very helpful. There's also telehealth if you don't want to leave and go to a physical office if your state allows telehealth. But just in terms of letting go of guilt, As I said, I made lists myself. And then when I looked on ASCO's site, we cross-pollinated a lot of our strategies. I just had a few more involving humor, comic perspective, laughter, and acting out the scenario. So just in terms of what they had, also, you can give yourself some affirmations, that cancer is not your fault or anybody else's fault. Losing someone to cancer is not your fault. I know sometimes when people smoke cigarettes or they drink, they blame themselves for causing themselves cancer. Also excessive sugar intake. I've heard people blame themselves about that, not sleeping enough, working too hard, Regardless of what multiple factors contributed to you having cancer, nobody can pinpoint or define any of those one things. So just to be able to give yourself forgiveness for those behaviors and to really work with a therapist if you're feeling gridlock with that release. Now, there are different emotional situations that If you are in a state where you are binge eating, you are crying excessively, you are cutting yourself or beating yourself in some way, these feelings of guilt should really be dealt with with a professional. And I would urge you to seek help. If you just need to talk about your feelings, that's another good reason to get professional help or join a support group. Support groups, you'll hear me say, are like trying on a pair of shoes. You may have to try on a few before you feel comfortable. And a lot of the cancer organizations have online support groups if you do not want to leave the house to go to a physical support group. Focusing on the more positive aspects of your life, looking at gratitude and really thinking about being thankful that 
you are in the place you're in and thinking about writing down your emotions, sometimes journaling can really, really, really help. Now, having a sense of humor and developing your comic perspective can be really powerful when dealing with feelings of guilt. I did find a fun quote on the ASCO site that said, always find a reason to laugh. It may not add years to your life, but will surely add life to your years. Bravo, ASCO, for having that quote. I love that quote. I actually saw a couple studies that they referenced also that I thought were pretty cool. In a small study published in 2013, researchers interviewed 17 women receiving treatment for recurrent ovarian cancer about the ways they used and viewed humor related to their diagnosis. The researchers found that nearly all, 14 out of the 17, that's 82%, used humor to cope with their diagnosis. And 13 out of 17, that's 76%, reported that it helped reduce their anxiety. And then they go on to say in a separate study, 93% of people facing a terminal illness, so 316 out of 340 patient participants said maintaining a sense of humor at the end of life was very important, quote unquote, making it almost as important as the absence of pain. So if you've listened to other episodes of this podcast, We give lots of research studies and examples of how laughter in a comic perspective can help you, including the pivotal research study that Comedy Cures did that I reported at the recent annual meeting of AACR, where I got to present our findings of reducing the depression, stress, and anxiety of advanced cancer patients in the course of eight weeks, exposing them to 17 videos of my comic perspective. So that study had some other facets too, involving um, using artificial intelligence and a mental health app to deal with coping. So I would definitely say that if you are struggling with survivor's guilt, you might want to try out one of the mental health apps We used Neil, but there are several different uh, apps that I can think of, Calm, Muse, where you can set goals and really work on your mental health. I am completely fascinated by verbalizing anxiety, stress, and pain. I think when you do verbalize it into the universe, it loosens its stranglehold. It doesn't feel so dark and brooding. So if you've listened to different episodes of the stress busters that I do with creating operas out of your pain, and these aren't real operas, there are little funny operas that we sing in a very bizarre operatic voice, but literally almost shouting, singing what our pain is to the world. And you can do that privately or with a friend, writing down the things that are causing you so much pain and actually having a therapist or a friend read them. We also have an episode called Symphony Overwhelm, as opposed to the prior episode was the Stress Rock Opera, where we break our problems and feelings down into different parts of an orchestra and work through our problems that way. Again, these are all episodes that you can find of Beating Cancer Daily that are really focused on coping. I do love writing humor about things that are my pain points. And you can see that 31 day tumor humor challenge on the Comedy Cures website or in our social media. And I do do episodes specifically targeting tumor humor and coping. So I hope those are helpful too. Again, 
in reading the original joke, I was in no way mocking survivorship or not being sensitive if you've lost someone. But when Baloo wrote that technically everybody should have survivor's guilt, it made me think about the fact that I am not alone in survivor's guilt and that people are experiencing it all over the world. And when I hear that, one, it makes me realize that I am not unusual for having feelings of survivor guilt, but that also there is a shared energy about it around the world. And how can I help personally other people deal with their survivor's guilt and their loss? And that's why I do 365 days of podcasts about beating cancer daily and all the different facets that we go through as patients, as survivors, as caregivers, or as medical professionals. So I hope that you can use some of these strategies to start dealing with your survivor's guilt And if you don't have it and you're not experiencing it, that you use this episode to reach out to somebody that is experiencing it or let them hear this episode with you or you write down some of the strategies and key points and that you are the messenger and you help them. So thanks for listening. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. If you loved today's episode, then tell the world. Why? Because Beating Cancer Daily and our membership circle are both a listener and donor supported experience. So the more people you tell and the more people that join us, the more robust and interesting programs our nonprofit, the Comedy Cures Foundation, can bring to you throughout the year. I really want you to go to comedycures.org. And of course, I always want you to make a donation. It's tax deductible to the extent allowed by law. But what's super exciting is not only can you laugh and explore the comedy there, you can look at our membership levels and find the one that's great for you. And if you're feeling a little bit generous, gift one to a chemo brother or sister or to a caregiver that you just want to help them improve the quality of their day. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Guess what time it is. It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening.